This Week in Richmond is made possible in part by Dignity Memorial, caring for our communities with a network of funeral homes and cemeteries in Virginia and throughout North America. More information about Dignity Memorial's providers is online at DignityMemorial.com. Alpha Natural Resources, an energy company dedicated to respecting the land. Alpha Natural Resources, we power the world through the energy of our people. Haley Buick GMC, the place for a new Verano or Terrain Denali. In Richmond and online at HaleyBuickGMC.com. Everywhere there are lighting poles, there's one more opportunity to save money. Intelligent Illuminations provides cost-effective wireless lighting solutions for roadway or area outdoor lights. The Virginia Chamber of Commerce, the voice of the Virginia business community, working in legislative, regulatory, and political arenas to promote the free enterprise system. So what do you do? Information about getting involved in advanced technology careers, making everything from clean energy to life-saving medicine, is available at dreamitdoitvirginia.com. Additional support is provided by these sponsors. And by the members of Virginia's public television stations. Thank you. And once again, we're privileged to have members of the staff, the General Assembly staff, who are with us on this week in Richmond. We've had some of your colleagues before, but today we'd like to introduce the two of you to our viewers, Meg Graham with Morning. Delegate Massey yes, and Janiah Jones with Senator McEachin. And we appreciate the two of you being on. We'll have two of your colleagues on in another segment in this same show. But we'd like for you to tell the viewers uh, where your delegate and your senator, what part of the Commonwealth they represent, how long you've been with them, and then we'll talk some about some of the tasks that you do. Meg, if you'd right. start. Yes, David, thank you. Uh, I am uh, Delegate Jimmy Massey's aide, legislative assistant, legislative aide, and Delegate Massey is in the House of Delegates for Virginia for the 72nd House District. And the 72nd House District uh, lies entirely within Enrico County, um, running from the, the far west portion where it uh, adjoins Goochland, comes around the north up into the Glen Allen area and then finishes, uh, not that one side is um, more densely populated than the other, but we come around to the lakeside area uh, in Westminster, Canterbury area. Um, Delegate Massey's been in the House of Delegates. Uh, his first session was 2008, having been elected in the fall of 2007, and I've been with him uh, all but that first session. Uh, my first session was in 2009, so six sessions in, through this last one. Thank you. Janelle? Uh Good morning, Mr. Bailey. So, uh, Senator McEachin represents parts of Richmond City, uh, parts of Henrico County and Hanover County, as well as all of Charles City County, so he has a pretty diverse district there, um, and I have been with Senator McEachin's office since, uh, I believe, uh, January of 2012, so this is my third session in his office. Very good. Well, I appreciate the two of, two of you being on. Uh, Meg and Jediah, tell the viewers some about, what, about the tasks that you have. I was looking back at an article that Brennan Long wrote a little over a year ago, and she made, made reference to the fact that you you had to do organizing work, you had to keep schedules, and then, but what, what all do you do for the delegate and the senator? Well, uh, each day, each month, each year it has its own personality in the General Assembly, depending on what the issues are for that particular time. Out of session, um, there can be a lot of research done to uh, consider new legislation and working with the legislative services, which are in-house attorneys. Uh, for that. The delegate serves on a number of commissions or subcommittees that meet uh, in the interim months, which is how we refer to the out-of-session months. 
and there may be topics or issues coming up in those meetings that likewise would necessitate research and study uh, in order to be have the delegate well prepared for those sessions. In general, uh, in fact, it was a senator that had said to me when I first came on board that what the job of a legislative assistant should be in session or out of session is to have the delegate be the most prepared he can be, be it for a vote or a decision or on an issue and a topic. And it may be just scheduling to have him be well prepared and there on time, but it could also be materials in, on those issues. And Shania, what would you add to that good list? Yes, so to add what Meg said, um, in addition to that, lots of constituent services issues. Um, you know, in our roles here as legislative aides, we are the liaison between um, our office and the state agencies with constituents. So just helping constituents if they have certain issues with different agencies. Um, in addition to that, going out into the community to different um, events that may be occurring um, just to represent the senator um, or to um, gather information about just kind of keep a pulse on what's going on in the um, community as well. You know, my hunch is, I may be right, I may be wrong, that probably more of that occurs in the Senate than the House just because the district is, is so much larger. Uh, any, any Senate district is going to be two and a half times as large as, as the House district, and so there's probably more of those times necessary because we can remind our viewers, leg uh, legislators are part-time. That's, yeah, that's a part-time position. They, they may spend many more hours than what would be considered part-time, but it's part-time. That's true, it is. And uh, yes, I would say certainly because of the size, the constituent issues may be uh, more voluminous in the Senate side, but um, likewise in the House, you know, it's just good to build those relationships with the state agencies, as was mentioned, because whether it's one or ten, you know, being able to quickly and um, expeditiously deliver the service to that constituent mm -hmm. is, is really why um, we're here. You know, during the session, oftentimes the, the public who's coming in, whether they be actually constituents or just public coming in, more likely than not are having an opportunity to see you, particularly at times when they can't get to see the delegate or the senator. Right, either here at the General Assembly or as been mentioned earlier in terms of events out in the district. Um, it's just a team approach that whether it be interns or myself or the member, the delegate, you know, to reach as many constituents to be as visible and, and accessible and approachable as possible um, as a team is really the best service we can provide. I agree. And, and while certainly you, you can't really speak and say the delegate of the senator is going to vote such and such a way unless you've been told that. I, I imagine many times you're gathering information, oftentimes from constituents or lobbyists or others that are on this side and on the other side, gathering the information to, to help the legislator determine if he has not already determined just where his, what his position might be. Yes, the constituent viewpoint is a huge piece of the information gathering for the delegate's decision um, to have that pulse on the public, uh, as was mentioned. And uh, it is an information gathering. It's uh, often the, right at the, the minute of the vote that it can be known what the member is going to decide, gathering information from colleagues, constituents, right up to the very last because it is a citizen legislature and trying to get the debate and all the information out to make the most knowledgeable decision is an important part of the process. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the interim time, as we would refer mm -hmm. to it, uh, prior to the 2015 session. So, Jediah, you start on this one, then we'll get Meg, too. Uh, tell our viewers, what's some of the best ways for them to contact the office get you, somebody else in the staff, to, or to get uh, to the senator? What's What, what works best? Sure. So um, when we are not in session, our district office is actually located um, off of Nine Mile Road in Laburnum. So the senator's uh, law firm is our district office, and that's right in the 
uh, heart of the community. Um, but I am here year round at the General Assembly Building working from this office and so we can be contacted via email or by phone um, or by paying a visit to our office if you, someone has concerns that they would like to bring to Senator McEachin's attention. Also we are um, year round we uh, consider ideas for legislation. So if someone has an idea for legislation that they would be interested to speak with Senator McEachin about, we're more than welcome to find a time for them to meet with the Senator and consider that proposal. Um, and we generally take a look at legislation um, in the early fall to prepare for January. You know, you mentioned an important point because some of the legislators have an office both where they have their full-time day job mm -hmm. And if they're in somewhat in the metropolitan area around the capital, they keep an office active here too. Yes. So it's probably important in those areas in particular to call ahead, email ahead, because so that they don't go to the wrong office. Exactly. If they're coming to see Jedaya, they're not going out on Nine Mile Road. Right. They're, they're likely seeing you here. Yes. And I oftentimes make uh, trips to the law office to meet with constituents in different meetings as well. Yes. And, and Meg? Much the same yeah. for us because of the proximity to uh, the General Assembly buildings that I'm here year-round. Uh, the delegate tries to keep a consistent schedule of a particular afternoon every week where he'll meet uh, on an appointment basis here at the General Assembly. Um, but of course, uh, many of the appointments are out in the district and seeing constituents constantly at uh, pre-arranged invited appointments. Yeah, I think that that's important for people to know that, uh, as I often tell them, legislators are easier to talk with than people. Mm -hmm. And I say that to get their attention, meaning that, that there's, it's rare that there's someone who's elected and re-elected who's extremely shy. So no. they're gregarious. They want to be, they want to be out. two members are certainly <laughs> yeah. two of the more Yes, I mean, they, they want to be out mm -hmm. inter interacting with people and uh, people who are watching the show who are part of some, some organization, some club or whatever it is, uh, whether they're in the areas that the two of you have legislators representing or around the Commonwealth, they, they need to know, they need to be in contact with them mm -hmm. now during the interim and say, come by our, you fill in the blank club or whatever, we'd like to have you come and to bring some remarks. Right, I'd say it's much easier to meet with a delegate out of session uh, in the interim than during session. During session, they're in committee meetings, they're on the floor for their um, various bodies. Um, so out of session uh, is often when most of the constituents have meaningful conversations with the members. Out of session, the schedule is a little bit more relaxed and the senator has more time to devote to each constituent or organization. As Meg said, during session we're on a tight schedule, often scheduling uh, meetings within 15 minute increments um, because the senator has multiple committees and um, general assembly business to attend to. And, and during the session you can schedule that appointment and then you have to let people know the legislator is still on the floor, or they left the floor session and went straight to some other meeting. And uh, I try to remind people that during the session, they are most fortunate if they get to meet with the legislative assistant. Right. That's the most It's on a best efforts basis to be able to meet with the member themselves. And yes. sometimes that's walking between meetings, sometimes it's in the elevator, it's catch as catch right. can. Yes. So out of session's better. Oh. Meg and Jediah, thank you very much for helping to educate our viewers and thank you for what you do on behalf of your legislators and for the constituents. So our time's up, but You're we'll welcome. have another conversation again. But okay. thank you both. Thank you, David. Thank you for You're having welcome. us. We're delighted to have two additional members of the legislative staff here at the General Assembly with us. And we need to introduce the two of you to our audience, Dale Hargrove Alderman. And I stress the middle name, we can tell them more <laughs> about that later. And Jason De La Cruz. And appreciate the two of you being on. Jason, you have the, the unique status of the four legislative assistants of being the one male. And, it, <laughs> and, and it's almost the ratio. 
-hmm. because there are practically three times as many women who serve as legislative assistants right now that, as there are men. So we're glad that to have you with us, uh, with, with Senator McDougall, with Delegate Fowler, and we'd like to have you tell our, first tell our viewers the region. We'll start with you since yours is the House District, and then we'll move to the other. Where, where does that House District compose? Uh, the 55th District um, encompasses half of Hanover County, Caroline County, about three quarters of Caroline, and a couple of precincts in southern Spotsylvania. Okay, and then the Senate District, Senator McDougall? Senator McDougall's district is very large. Oh. We have uh, about 10 counties. Oh. So uh, we're Hanover to Spotsylvania, um, all the way up to King George, all of Northern Neck. So it's a, it's a large district. Yes, but the two, these two districts do overlap in yes. the yes. sense that uh, you, you have some of the same areas. And Dale, I, I stress the Hargrove because <laughs> for certainly for viewers here in Central Virginia and we would hope viewers around the Commonwealth, they re remembered when your dad served and he's still alive and doing well, yeah. but he retired and Delegate Cox served a couple of terms and now Delegate Fowler and you're, you're here. <laughs> Daughter of a former <laughs> legislator who's now a legislative assistant. That's that may be unique. I don't know if there's anyone <laughs> else that ha has has done that. So, uh, our goal in our in our few minutes that we have is to help educate our viewers as to what you have experienced. Of course, you knew it from your dad's side, and you now you know it as in L.A. And what you've experienced as what are, what are some of the best ways for people around the Commonwealth who want to contact their legislator, how should they do that? What should they be doing here during this interim time? You want to start? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure, I'll start. Um, I think the best way is just uh, to really call us. Um, I, I enjoy talking on the phone. I, I enjoy talking to my constituents. Um, mostly, we hear a lot of from them during the uh, General Assembly session, which is great, uh, especially because you know, they are for or against the bill. Uh, but we would like to hear from a lot of them throughout the year because that's how we formulate what bills we're going to carry uh, to solve what issues they may have. Um, and a lot of times, a lot of the calls we get are, you know, we kind of help guide them the right way of where they need to go or who they need to contact, and we kind of facilitate what issues they might have and how we can solve them. Um, but I would say the best way is probably either phone calls. Uh, emails are great. Um, just because we have a record of it as well. Uh, every phone call gets logged, and um, it really helps us when we're looking back at things, especially bills uh, from previous years uh, or future bills, see if there's any correlation to what people have um, spoken about or spoken mm -hmm. against. Okay. Th thank you. Dale, what would you add to that we're, good list? We're, we're very similar to um, Jason here in Ryan's office. People, we do. I love talking on the phone. Uh, Delegate Fowler likes talking to the constituents. Um, we also encourage them to email us. We get a few letters in the age of emailing. Mostly everything comes in by email now. But I, I would encourage people, you know, we encourage them to call us at any time. And we love talking to the constituents. And we're actually, right now, Delegate Fowler and I are spending a lot of time in Carolina and Spotsylvania because that's an area that um, we did not know as much about mm -hmm. when we first got in the campaign. And um, we, were, we were out quite a bit up in that part of the, part of the district. And uh, it's been great meeting. There's a lot of fabulous people up there. You know, in this age of electronic communications, it's almost retro to think that call, telephone. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, but I, I think that what you're saying would be typical, fairly typical of practically all of the legislative offices and our viewers need to know that. Pick up the phone mm -hmm. and, and make a call. Yeah, that's right. Well, I think it's, it's you can feel what the constituent wants, um, whereas an email, it's really hard to put feeling into it. Um, and plus, the back and forth sometimes can be long, whereas oh. on uh, a phone conversation, it's instant. It's very... Um, you're able to find out instantly yes. what they want or solve them or uh, guide them in the right direction. Whereas an email, it can drag out a little bit because then you're asking <laughs> follow-up questions, I would say. Um,
but either way is great. Sometimes we get them on Facebook too, Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'd get a lot of Facebook. We mm. get a lot of Facebook action. Uh, people love to comment on various things we'll put on Facebook, uh, and we'll we'll even put, you know, things on there such as you know, please comment on this, and they love to wave. I think Facebook's very popular. Oh, that, that's good. You know, on the email part, unless the unless the writer tells you, you don't really know whether they're a constituent or not. And and one of the pet peeves I've heard from legislators that I'll mention on the show is if they're sending an email, if not in the subject line, very quickly after that, they should give their home address. Exactly because right. because in the heat of the session, maybe not so much now in the interim time, mm -hmm. But in the heat of the session, you really, you really want to know, and your legislator wants to know, is that one of the constituents or is that somebody just around the state who's just emailing all 140 people on something and they're, and they're not one of our constituents? I think you can usually tell by the email a lot of times um, whether it's a local person or not. Most people do put their name and address, but I do think that's yeah. a very good idea. Uh, you know, if, if it's a, someone in our district, we immediately respond to them. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's in someone else's district, we'll forward it on to that particular well, legislator. That's nice. That's helpful. And yeah. uh, we, we do try to do that so they get help. You do get a lot of form emails, wouldn't you say, Jason? Like a lot of, you know, these just, they send it a letter to every delegate and senator in the state. Yes. Yeah, I would say uh, a lot of the times if it's, uh, I don't know, about I would say non-controversial and controversial issues. We both uh, receive I would say significant amount of uh, right. form emails, which a lot of the forms do allow you to put in your address uh, and where mm. you're from, which is great. Um, but like I said, a lot of the follow-up emails that we do have constitu with constituents are, what's your address or you know where where do you live? Right. But a lot of them have been good about uh, they at least put their county. That's good. That's good. So here during the interim time, then what are some of the main tasks that you're doing for the delegate and for the senator? Well, in, in our case, uh, Delegate Fowler is a new delegate. He just, he just was elected last November. So we're in the process of getting his database together, uh, making sure that we have um, our newsletter reach as many people as possible. We do put out a newsletter. I'd say after session, uh, probably every month, or if something's going on, like right now the hot topic is Medicaid expansion, we're putting out a lot more information about Delegate Fowler's stance on that. Mm -hmm. um, we're spending quite a bit of time, um, actually we're spending quite a bit of time sending letters to people just to let them know what's happening, how he feels about things. Uh, we, we've got a lot of activities. May's a busy time right now. There's lots of events going on. And uh, we both spend a lot of time attending different sorts of things that are important in our district. I'd I'm say sure that'll be on through the summer and the fall. It'll be the same. It'll be very yeah. busy. I, I would say we're pretty much about the same there. We're uh, really reaching out um, or informing our constituents uh, using... Facebook, uh, Twitter, emails, uh, newsletters, press releases, whatever we can. Uh, and Senator McDougal's really good about being in the district too. Uh, a lot of a lot of times we like to kind of tag team the district. If he's out in the Northern Neck, I'm up in Spotsylvania, Caroline County, and we switch or we tend events together. Um, and that's what we really enjoy is kind of meeting the people right there in person, uh, face to face, finding out what's going on, uh, and enjoying them and usually some great food and <laughs> some good conversation as well so 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 Dale we we don't want to let the time go by without your <laughs> updating our viewers on how's your dad how's how's my dad is doing great he is uh, 87 he's very interested in the political affairs of the state uh, he 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 really keeps up to date on everything he's certainly slowed down a little bit but he's still out there and um, he's, he's very interested in keeping on in the fight. He's always saying, you got to keep fighting for what you believe in. And uh, he, he's, he's, I got to say that for his age, he's doing excellent. 
Well, certainly he's legendary here at the Capitol <laughs> for many things <laughs> many that he, reasons. many reasons, <laughs> one of them which his office on the eighth floor that he would use the steps. <laughs> he did not use the elevator, he used well, the steps. Well, he goes so. to the Y every day and works so he's, out. he's still keeping healthy. And uh, uh, he had urges all of us yeah. to do that. Well, thank, thank you both, Dale and Jason, for being on This Week in Richmond. We look forward to having another conversation with you. Oh, thank you I very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. This Week in Richmond is made possible in part by Dignity Memorial, caring for our communities with a network of funeral homes and cemeteries in Virginia and throughout North America. More information about Dignity Memorial's providers is online at DignityMemorial.com. Alpha Natural Resources, an energy company dedicated to respecting the land. Alpha Natural Resources, we power the world through the energy of our people. Haley Buick GMC, the place for a new Verano or Terrain Denali. In Richmond and online at HaleyBuickGMC.com. Everywhere there are lighting poles, there's one more opportunity to save money. Intelligent Illuminations provides cost-effective wireless lighting solutions for roadway or area outdoor lights. The Virginia Chamber of Commerce, the voice of the Virginia business community. Working in legislative, regulatory, and political arenas to promote the free enterprise system. So what do you do? Information about getting involved in advanced technology careers, making everything from clean energy to life-saving medicine, is available at dreamitdoitvirginia.com. Additional support is provided by these sponsors. And by the members of Virginia's public television stations. Thank you.